tonight You're about to have a really good time And it's sure to make you smile On the bus, in the car, on the airpods without wires Crank it up on the website, it's the Bad and Liam Podcast Bad and Liam Podcast G'day there, podcaster Got a number here, Yelena uh, should we give her a buzz? The mobile phone you have called is currently not accepting incoming calls. Okay. Oh, okay. I didn't realise you could have that option to yeah. not accept right. calls. Yelena, well, guess what? You just missed your opportunity you to be what? on the Ben and Liam podcast. Yelena? More like Yelena. Am I right? Uh, no, I'm sorry, Yelena, if you're listening. Um, hey, just a heads up. Really fun show again. Uh, we had some hectic stuff in this one. Um, some, really, some really good calls this week, but the first thing you're going to hear... Um, has a lot of Adelaide references in yep. it, uh, one of them being a pie floater. Mm-hmm. You, you might not get a lot of the references. Well, a pie floater is, um, it's a pie. Yeah. Is it a potato pie? Well, it's just, no, it's just any, like, it's like a meat pie floating in peas, mushy peas. No, I believe, you've never had one, though, and neither have I. Have you had one? Yeah, it's just a pie in peas. That's what that's what it is. No, I believe it's a pie hmm. with mashed potato on top and peas and then smothered in gravy. Yeah, but it's like swimming in peas. Well, I think there's peas on the edge of the plate because they uh, pour peas over there's it. There's no potato involved. That's just it's just a pie and peas. That looks rank. I know. Where's the gravy in the potato? There isn't. I'm just saying. And I'm saying that's what a pie floater. It's just putting a pie in mushy peas. I'm what... pretty sure there's gravy and mashed potato involved. Mate, look at all these photos. Well, regardless, either way, it's like a pie floating. Anyway, it, in the and, peas. and look, things are way less and funny when you have potato, to explain maybe them. There's gravy. I don't know. When you have to explain them that much, it's not as fun. But anyway, no, but it's people that don't know what it is and that have no idea. Yeah, that's true. I, was, I was think, yeah, it's sometimes there's just like so much Adelaide references yeah. in a thing that we just want to give you a heads up if yep. you're an interstate listener. Yep. Uh, so yeah, so just keep an eye out for that. Please one. enjoy NCIS. It's one of the longest running TV shows in the US. There's 19 seasons of it now. It's I've a lot never, of crime. A lot of crime. Uh, I've never really been a massive fan myself. Um, there is box spin-offs. There's NCIS Los Angeles. They got NCIS New Orleans. NCIS Hawaii. And now they're making. Which is exciting, but I also think we've been shafted a bit there because Sydney gets everything, right? Yeah, there's a lot of crime here. Yeah. I mean, don't we get paid out all the time in Adelaide for being like the murder capital? Mm-hmm. It'd be a perfect spot for an NCIS. But I, I don't think we're dead in the water, Ben, because mm-hmm. um, obviously there's CSI as well, and there's CSI Vegas, mm-hmm. there's CSI Miami, mm-hmm. which is pretty popular. What about CSI Adelaide? So what are we looking at here, Mullins? One victim dead, the other with severe burns to the left side of the body. Huh. I thought we were in prospect, not... Burnside. All right, Mercurio. We got a double homicide at the Brickworks. I suppose you could say they both met there. Mile end. Okay, so who's our main suspect? Well, Mercurio, you're not going to believe it. It's the Chief Public Health Officer. So we're looking for Nick Killer Spuria. All right, we got a lethal stabbing at Scotty's Motel. Are you telling me that someone's been killed? Okay, a woman has killed her own husband and his lover in their own bed. What suburb? Greenwith. I suppose you could say she was Greenwith Envy. We got a 40-year-old male upside down in the River Torrens. I got a good one for you. <laughs> I got a really good one for you. All right. I suppose you could say he's a guy floater. <laughs> Are you ready to hit the road this summer? Hell yeah. Well, it's time to what if it. Visit whatif.com to plan and book your accommodation, flights, activities, even car hire. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable. How good? Booking cancellation windows apply. What if it's Aussie for travel? Check government advisories before booking and travelling. It's 610. Hallelujah, it's 610. Good morning, Robin in Golden Grove, the 5125. Bigging it up for the Sunnybrook Massive, my old hood. How are things in Golden Grove this morning? Yeah, very good. Just at the gym. Yeah, nice. Oh, (laughs) gym. Which gym? Uh, Luke's Fitness Boot Camp. Okay. Not heard of that one. Is that like one that's set up in a park or something? 
Yeah, it's an industrial park. Oh, <laughs> hang on, the industrial park near Garden Grove? Yeah. Hey, I learned to drive there, Robin. Oh. Yeah, lucky, well. lucky I'm on my P2s <laughs> now, so I won't be running anyone over doing their push-ups this morning. Hey, now, Robin, uh, good news. Just for getting on air, you're in the draw for 50K Fridays. Woohoo! Now, I've got some more good news for you as well, because if you manage to win the 610 quiz, you get to pick the next song we play that Liam and I nominate. Yeah, for the last few mornings, I have been desperately trying to get this song up. Well, somebody told me. So that is the choice you have. You can pick my song if you win, or you could pick Ben's. <laughs> I'm kidding. A bit of aha take on me. The decision is yours, Robin, if you can get these next five questions okay. correct. Okay, first question. Aussies could expect to pay way more for international flights over the next few years. What is the national airline of Australia? Wanted. People are finding redback <laughs> spiders in their grape bags. What fruit were they finding pins in a few years ago? Strawberries. There's a limited edition Tim Tam perfume coming out. Excited for that. What bird is the logo of Arnott's Biscuits? Oh. Is it a kookaburra? Oh, it's not no. a kookaburra. <laughs> Sorry, Robin. And a kookaburra. Have fun at boot camp. Trent. From Salisbury Heights, uh, the Arnott's Biscuit Bird. What is it? Oh, I have absolutely no idea, boys. I'll say an emu. Uh, an not emu. an emu. You've never eaten a pack of the biscuits before in your life? My goodness. Megan from Wollonga. Do you know Arnott's Biscuits, the bird? Do you know Sorry. what it is? Oh, is it a parrot? Yeah. Yeah. Well done. I thought it was pretty iconic. Yeah, parrot, macaw sort of thing. I just thought it might have been a Rosalia, but yeah, no, it's definitely a macaw. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, the DeLorean. Um, sorry, uh, sorry. DeLorean have announced they're releasing an electric car. I didn't know it was a real thing. Which sci-fi movie franchise made the DeLorean car famous? Uh, no idea. No idea. The DeLorean, where the doors open up like like bat wings. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> All right, Megan. Thank you very much for playing, uh, Brendan. The DeLorean. Yo. What movie made it famous? Back to the Future. Yeah. 90s pop yeah. group Aqua are back in the recording studio. 25 years. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> You're excited. <laughs> 25 years after the release of Barbie Girl, uh, can you finish these lyrics? Life in plastic, it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The most unsure response we've ever had, but obviously we have a big Aqua fan in the house. Uh, I'm sure you're very excited for the gig, Brendan. Excellent. <laughs> Sounds like fun. You're a bit of fun, Brendan. Yeah, you are. You I like, are I like your energy, fun. Brendan. Now, you have the choice in front of you. You are in the draw to win $50,000 already. Would you like to oh, hear my song, Brendan? Would you like to hear some killers this morning? Or would you like to wind it back for Ben and um, hear Aha Take On Me? Oh, come on, man. It has to be aha take on me. Just yep. for a laugh. Okay, <laughs> thank Just you for very a much. Bit of a laugh, which we've had a few from you this morning, Brendan. We're all, <laughs> we're all having a good time. Hope you're having a pod blast with a podcast. We love doing story toppers. The way it works, Adelaide, is very simple. Either Liam and I will go first with a story, then it's your turn to try and top it. This morning, the topic is craziest thing you've seen on a plane. Now, Liam, I don't think I've seen anything crazy on a plane, so I'm assuming you've seen something pretty crazy. Not even me. This is just my mate over the weekend. 13, 20, 14, if you've seen something crazy on a plane. But uh, he was on a flight on the way home from Sydney yeah. to Adelaide, and a guy near the front started flipping around a bit and had a full seizure. Really? Like, Foaming from the mouth, like, pretty scary. And they had to do the old, is anyone a doctor on this flight? <gasps> and a hero, a hero from the back, sort of got out and ran through. And apparently, like, so he was really close to the action. Yeah. And then another guy came up and said, I'm a nurse. And the doctor said, that's okay, you're not needed. <laughs> which, is, which I think is pre pretty rude. I would be, if I was on a plane, though... And the doctor came from the back of the plane. I'd be suspicious because I thought like the doctor would be sitting at front in first class. Then again, you'd, how would they know you're a doctor when you're buying your tickets? They're not going to know that. No, but I mean, you'd have a lot of money. 
Oh yeah, like a no, yeah. I, I get what you mean. I thought you yeah. meant like Qantas bump all the doctors to the front. No, in case no, an no, no, no. Yeah, of course. I think some civilian was like, "This is my moment." Even yeah, like, well, maybe, doctor, maybe, maybe he's like, "I'm sure I can work it out." Just yeah. make sure their tongue's not in their mouth. And, and so was the person okay? Yeah, but apparently, so they were sort of just say 15 minutes out of Adelaide, and he reckons they got there in about five because he reckons the pilot was just oh, really? really tried to get. And by the time they hit the tarmac, there was ambulances there, and there was like emergency vehicles, oh. and they had to get this guy out quick, smart. He was all fine all okay. Imagine if they stuck to procedure and the people in front of them got to get off first. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, mate. You're just going to say We have there. rules. Got to wait it out. There's, there's rules for a reason. <laughs> but how's that? That is pretty crazy. I, I love her. Is there a doctor in the room? Yeah. Sort of. Any of those stories are always great. What is the craziest thing you've seen on a plane? 13, 24, 10. If you can story top, get in touch. Sarah, what happened? Hey, Ben and Liam. You think that? crazy. We were on a flight it must have been Kuala Lumpur or somewhere like that. The yeah. lady next to us at the start of the flight before takeoff zipped herself up in a head to toe body bag for the entire flight. <laughs> <laughs> like 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 a body bag sort of sleepy bag so she was just in a cone so of she was silence like and everything. But it was like plastic and it was before corona time so it, but it must have been some sort of, I don't know. Like germ shoes. <laughs> Something like that. That's crazy. She didn't want to be in a tube of farts right now. She's like, no, no, I'll be in my own ecosystem, please. <laughs> in my own tube. Yeah, my own farts. Uh, that is wild. Chris, what happened? Hey, Ben and Len, you think, you think that's crazy? This one's crazy. We're, uh, we're on a flight back from LA. Yeah. Um, we took off. I looked out the, the window. I was just next to the wing, and there's fuel dumping out the wing, and I'm like, oh, that's <gasps> not good. So I looked across the wife, and I'm like telling her, and then um, sure enough, over the PA, they asked for, is there a doctor on board? Um, there happened to be a couple of paramedics and a doctor. Mm. Anyway, a lady a few rows back on the way to Australia for a holiday. She's started to go into labour and uh, they're diverting the plane to Hawaii. Yeah. So, But within about half an hour, we're still flying. She's had the kids. Um, all the planes cheering and <laughs> carrying on. Where did she have them? And, like in uh, the aisle? Yeah, yeah. They they literally um, like laid her down in the aisle. They took her to like the way where they had the food, where they get yeah, the food yeah. prepared. Yeah. They took her to there. And uh, yeah, doctor and a couple of paramedics... Um, the baby was way premature, so they cranked oh, yeah. the temperature up in the cabin. Yeah. And uh, then there was heaps of people, all the staff forgot about everyone else and were worried about, obviously, the baby. And uh, then there was heaps of people getting way too hot. And <laughs> so me and the missus started walking around giving out drink bottles. Yeah, oh, right. So you had, you had fuel pouring out the side of the wing and then someone gave birth on your flight. Yeah, was the fuel coming out the wing unrelated? Well, apparently they said that there was they needed to get rid of the fuel to land. So because oh, we're obviously yeah. planning on coming straight back to Australia, yeah, but they diverted to Hawaii, and then um, we sat on the tarmac for hours and hours because they wouldn't let us get off. I like and, how um, you a few times mentioned the heat as if there were people going, "I don't care about the newborn. <laughs> yeah. I don't care about the baby, premature baby. I want the air conditioner on. a little hot." And I don't like eating plain nuts when it's hot. Did they call the baby Airbus A370? <laughs> this is a little ode to the people who helped. Chris, that is a very that good story, mate. That is not being that, right? Well, I don't know. We've got one more caller, so let's find out. Katie, go for it. <laughs> Hi, Liam. You think that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, some, somebody um, died on our plane. Oh. Um, so crazy but horrible. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we were flying from Dubai back to Australia, so back to Adelaide and... Uh, somebody started getting really sick on the plane. They yeah. were calling over the PAs. Uh, any doctors, any nurses, any paramedics? There was no one. <gasps> um, so they were situated in in the, like the exit seat area. Mm. So they eventually ended up being on the floor. They were trying to use the defib. The defib didn't do anything. Yeah. There was uh, the airline people. <laughs> they yeah. were running up and down the aisle screaming. Um, crying, oh. you know, freaking everyone out. Yeah. And um, they, we could see the flight path was veering kind of not towards Australia. Yeah. So we could see everything that was going on. But, you know, international flights are so big. Mm. You, everyone else in without our area obviously had no idea what was going on. So, um, yeah, we ended up landing in Mumbai in India. Yeah. Um, they had God. passed away. They were in a yeah body bag. Uh, we were on the tarmac in Mumbai for 10 hours on the plane. You couldn't get off? Um, we couldn't get off because we were not supposed to be there. So we had to wait for the police to come and take his body off of the plane. And so we dropped him off in Mumbai. We, we couldn't get food or anything. They weren't doing service during this time. 
Um, and then we had obviously missed our curfew to come back into Adelaide. So we had to fly back to Dubai. You're uh, kidding. Yeah, and stay there. They put us up for the night, except none of us had luggage. We only had what we had on us. So we had no currency. So we basically couldn't leave. We had to just wash our clothes in the hotel room that night, get back on the plane the next day and go another 18 hours back to Adelaide. So Katie, uh, when, the, when, the person, when the person sadly passed away... Did, yeah. the, did the flight staff zip him up in a body bag then and there? Yeah, they did. And so still no one else knew what was going on. Um, so when we landed in Mumbai, everyone else from other ends of the plane were walking over to have a look and obviously there was a body bag just on the floor, like oh, in, in our main cabin. Whiz. It's just horrifying so knowing it, that the flight staff have body bags on hand. And also, yes. obviously, it's, flights can be intense at the best of times, even if there's a bit of turbulence. Yeah. And also the staff. I mean, they're used to just, you know, handing out meals and giving people water and that sort of chocolates. stuff. And then all yeah, of a sudden, it, they're putting a body in a bag. And so where was the where was the person? Were they just in the aisle? Did they move them to the back where no one could see yeah. them? Yeah. So, you know how you have separate sections in the international flights, so yeah. separate cabins, basically. Yeah. So we could all see what was happening. Um, it was full on. So... They literally left the person in the exit area, um, not back away from anybody else, just in front of us. So we could see see it the whole time and we could see it unfolding the whole time. Um, and it was pretty low-key to begin with. And then when they weren't responding, obviously, yeah. that went up another level. Yeah. Um, and no doctors on board. DFib didn't work. So I suppose everyone was freaking out. Um, they were by themselves as well, unfortunately. And then, yeah, we had to leave their body in Mumbai, which was really sad. Um, oh, Katie. And Katie, well, we're not going to beat that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> we're not, we're we're not going to top another, that story. I don't even think I knew, can, Hey, look. I knew this story would come up sometime in my life. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Here we are. What a sad way to win $50,000. <laughs> yeah, we haven't won, but you are in the draw. Yeah, yeah you are in the draw. Um, yeah, wow. look, there, there's really no gags or songs to go into after that. But, my God, story toppers never fails. Never hey, fails, that, what a it? story. Ben and Liam are in your head. Got some very unfortunate audio for you from another radio station. Uh, it's an AM station over in Western Australia. The newsreader's doing his report and they fire into some ads that don't complement the story very well. Yeah, so this goes for 20 seconds. Mm-hmm. Wait till the very, very end. Yeah. Check it out. A 19-year-old man has lost both legs in an accident while cutting limestone blocks at Bunbury in Western Australia. He was rushed to the Royal Perth Hospital where doctors are trying to reattach the legs. Updating sports. Thanks to TAB Sportsbet Multi, the new sports bet with plenty of legs. Australian all-rounder show. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. That's too. very unfortunate. He, he's just crying inside going, Australian all round. I'm just like trying to press on, moving on, knowing full well that's a very unfortunate mistake. He already knows people are cutting that audio out and playing on other that's, networks. That's getting a run on Nova in Adelaide. Everyone's loving that. <laughs> yes, what a funny story. And look who's come squeaking into the studio. It is the Love Rat. Love Rat, Bill's a Love Rat. Isabel, good morning. Good morning. Uh, we like to go through emails that come through to the Love Rat email, loverat at novafm.com.au. This one would like to remain anonymous. It says, hey, Love Rat, hubby and I got married at the end of the last year. Congrats, guys. Clap. Everyone clapped except okay, for Ben. Okay, wow. Um, I run the panel. My hand is on the buttons. If I clap, not doing then anything. I'm not ready for anything to happen. We had a big weekend with all our friends and family, and we got some very generous gifts. Thought you'd be interested in this one, though. We got a shocker from my aunt. A Kmart pedestal fan and an ashtray. We don't smoke. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's a horrible <laughs> gift. It's pretty bad. So you can have a smoke and then blow the Yeah, blow the smoke <laughs> out of your house. Even also, just- like, do you... Did she, like, wrap the pedestal fan and then have it on, like, the... No, it was in a box. Yeah, it'd be in a box. Okay, right. Yeah. Yeah, but it seems like it's re-gifted, doesn't it? Like, it seems like... Pro- probably. Although... But then, And how does an ashtray... How does an ashtray fit with the... That is not a handy gift. Plus, you get a pedestal fan from Kmart for 25 bucks. Yeah, and they've just saved 25 bucks. No, well, that, yeah, they've, paid, they've probably paid 100 plus to have that. that person at the wedding. Eating yeah, and drinking. Yeah, true. That is true. I don't know. I, I, look, hey, I think, that's great. I think it's a great gift. You just wait until you have a wedding one day, Belle, and you get 
you get forty pedestal fans. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I, I think I think they probably. Fans. I think these days, like, ev- like you're getting married in like a couple of months, man. Everyone, yeah. everyone prefers cash. Right? Everyone wants cash. It's lighter. It's easier. You've got. To, you've just had a massive expense of the wedding. Yep. You probably don't want something that potentially you've got already. Everybody's going to go out and buy what they want anyway. Like the olden days when couples were getting married super young, yeah, they'd go and make a register and you get them a kettle. Yeah, because you didn't toaster. have anything for your house. Now, just give them cash and let them get what they want to get. Mm, I thought the whole idea is that you get given a really sentimental gift, something like, that's like, like, like wow, a fan. We got given. Okay, well, no, not like a fan, but like you know, in thirty years, someone goes, "Oh, that's a nice." set of wine glasses and you say yeah we got that for our wedding yeah but then everyone has the same idea and you end up yeah. with like nine different sets of wine yeah. glasses yeah, and, and lots of fancy cheese so knives with your you name saying, on it because I look I haven't been to a heap of weddings I've been to only a few mostly just family look, I'm reading between the lines here Bill bring cash to Ben's wedding <laughs> 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 I don't think he's going to appreciate your decorative that, glasses yeah right 100% yeah. is it mostly just cash now yep <laughs> oh. <laughs> you lay well, the law down early. We'll get rid of the better school fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, oh, okay, yeah. Why right. don't we do this this morning? 13, 20, 4, 10. If you call up, you'll be in the draw to win $50,000. What did you get as a wedding present? I'm sure there's been mm. worse out there than a pedestal fan. That's pretty bad. It is pretty it's bad. Pretty good. But well, maybe you got like a lot of the same thing. What did you get as a wedding present? 13, 20, 4, 10 is the number. Give us a call. Andrea, what did you get? Yes, good morning. I got married back in the late 90s where we used to do the Maya gift registry. Yes. Uh, yeah. But we still ended up with four toasters, two bread makers and two of the old style sandwich makers. And that is why that way of <laughs> gift giving is now So dive. what, did they just do the registry wrong? Because aren't they supposed to like cross it off yeah. if you like someone says, I want the toaster, then they, they, well, no one else can buy what, that? that's what we thought, but obviously not. Someone I can't read, so yeah. <laughs> so Andrea, what did you do with them all? Um, I think we returned some of them. <laughs> I like the okay, idea so of like, it, you know, that was in the 90s and in like 2009 the toaster stopped working. You're like, well, we've got a brand new one in a box upstairs <laughs> and uh, we do have enough to get us through the rest of our lives. Thank you very much, Andrea. You're now in the draw for 50k Fridays just for getting on air. And we're talking wedding presents. What did you get for your wedding? Because we got an email sent in, Liam, and they got yeah. a pedestal fan. Yeah, and I also... I think that is handy. It, I don't it know just, why you guys are hating it on that. You can get a pedestal fan driving home in hard rubbish. I reckon, Ben, Ben, for your wedding, there's like 80-odd people coming. You're going to get cash from everyone, and then there's just going to be like no name on it, but you're going to get some like promotional Hungry Jack's glasses no, or something get- like that, and you go, I wonder who this is from. You will get a commemorative mug, and I will get a You know what would be funny? It. it would be quite funny uh, if you actually gave me a pedestal fan. Well, I no, would because appreciate I was going to say that, and then in my head I went, no, I will actually do that now as a gag, and now you've ruined it. Oh, so but... I'm too funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> uh, Jordy, what did you get as a wedding present? G'day, guys. So everybody gave us cash, except for my old boss ended up giving me a massive um, handmade glass vase. Right, so like, hand, <laughs> like he, blew, he blew the glass himself like he, he made it. Oh, I wouldn't put it past him, but no, I don't think he did. <laughs> I right. reckon he just... I don't know where he got it from, but oh, it was okay. just impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you like it, though? Did you like the vase? Yes. Oh, we love it. We thought it was absolutely awesome. Like, it's 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 huge. <laughs> so then, so you're saying that you actually didn't mind mm. getting the gift rather than the cash? Yeah, no, we thought it was a good change-up. I mean, the cash was, oh, handy. It helped with the honeymoon, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, but yeah. having, it was a very, it was a random thing. And it sort of, he just gave us this huge box. And then we pulled out and we're like, this is awesome. Yeah, it okay. works. Okay. 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 So now whenever you look at that vase, you look at it and go, that was from our wedding. Well, See, that's what ped- I'm talking about. It's not a pedestal about. fan, Bill. Yeah, no, yeah. It's yeah, a handmade and vase. I'm not saying to give a fan. I'm just saying if you give something that means something and has that, you know, that sentimental value, yeah. then you can look at it and go, that was from our wedding. And yeah. that's what I'm going to give you, Like ben. a pedestal fan. Warren joins us now. Warren, what did you get for your wedding? Morning, guys. Um, the in-laws paid off the debt for the, the wife um, from her previous marriage divorce bill. Really? <laughs> I mean, it's an interesting yeah. one, but also that, you know, obviously that's a bit of a strain on the new marriage. Like, that, that would actually be a huge help. <laughs> I think that's like, great. So did you, how did you get that? Was that like, a, did they write that on a note and then you opened it? 
Um, no, I just got told. He's got told. Um, when I asked, asked what come from her parents, and yeah. she said, oh, they just wiped the, uh, my divorce bill that I owed them from my previous marriage. Yeah, <laughs> wow. That's okay. fantastic. You know what's interesting with weddings as well, when you, obviously everyone, you got the wishing well or whatever, everyone gives you cash. Yeah. Do you, on the night, just sit there and open them in front of everyone? <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, at your well, seventh birthday party and everyone yeah. sits around yeah. you in a circle? Table seven, you can leave. Scrapping <laughs> out, seeing a lot of red notes in there. If it was like my yeah. parties, it, I'd just be crying the whole time. <laughs> Opening them, going, oh my god, thank you so much. <laughs> I thought you were. I sad. thought you were saying because like no one came to your seventh birthday. So <laughs> oh I was like, oh, we're getting no. a bit of rare insight into Bill's I sad childhood here. I actually cried a lot of my parties, but yeah, <laughs> you, you cry a lot though. Yeah, Abby, you do. A- a- Abby crying as well. Uh, Rhianne, and what did you get as a wedding present, mate? G'day, guys. So my brother, who is not an artist in his mid thirties, decided to draw us a picture of our wedding. <laughs> oh, okay. So of the wedding. So yeah. was he there on the day drawing it, or what he imagined it would be? Oh, like? oh no, it, it was it was a pre-drawn picture, but he sort of figured, you know, I've spent money getting a suit and all the rest of yeah. it, that a, a picture would suffice. <laughs> <laughs> He'd have it like all smudged on one side, where his arm was like working on the. <laughs> Did you keep it? Have you yeah. framed it? Uh, no, we haven't framed it, but I did find it the other day when I was looking through some old wedding stuff, and I it, I just laughed. I was like, oh, yep, still got it. Still there. <laughs> I, Beautiful I, I imagine it as, like, you know, you see those pictures of people with, like, a photo of someone, and it's, like, the tattoo they get of them. It's, like, so <laughs> yeah. warped. Like, I yeah. imagine that's what it would look like. Lieb Pod Men Cast. Wait, I said that wrong. Ben and Liam podcast. 25 degrees today, cloudy and showers. We're joined on the line now by one of Adelaide's favourite sons, Mr Sam Mack. Good morning. Ben and Liam, it's great to be on. Look, I wasn't completely sold by that weather report there, Ben. <laughs> just lack passion. Yeah. Uh, I've got to be completely honest. It was a bit of a throwaway. I want weather yeah. to be top billing. Something to work on for tomorrow. So yeah. That's a free yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. welcome. No, that is, that is bad of me having a weatherman on and then doing like a that's throwaway. That's it. On sunrise, there's a lot more oomph behind it, that's yep. for sure. And not only sunrise, <laughs> but uh, premiering 7pm yeah. this Sunday, Channel 7, you're going to be on Dancing with the Stars. Um, before practising for the show, were you, were you sort of known in your circles as a good dancer? Yeah, I mean, you know that, Liam, as a long-time friend. You know that I have a move called the Slightly Aggressive Peacock, yes. and you know that it's been banned from some nightclubs, including Red Square, where I did a lot of my training with it many years ago. Yeah. Um, so the fact that I'm going to be able to unleash that on, a, on an international, I, I'm going to say global scale, because yeah. it will go online after with TikTok. Uh, I'm massive on the talk. Just check it out, at Sam Mac. <laughs> Um, look, I'm really... So, sorry, I should be promoting Channel 7. Uh, Channel 7, this is Sunday <laughs> night. Uh, I'm really excited to unleash that on the world. It, it's a big moment. Well, look, Sam, you mentioned Red Square there. The reason you can do that is because you are Adelaide's very own, and that's why this morning we're doing this. Two degrees of separation. Adelaide is very small. It's been, it's been so long since we've done that that I think our voices are even different in the intro. You know what I mean? I feel like yeah. maybe we've got like um, voices have matured yeah, since then. It has been a while. Well, but... you know, my, my, my favourite segments are the segments that peak at the intro jingle. So it's yeah. a pleasure to be on this. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's the certainly going to be one of those. It's very simple. If you know Sam Mack, you call us 13 24 10. We put you on the radio with him and you see if you know each other. Sam, top line, um, where'd you grow up in Adelaide? Grew up in the northern suburbs, represent. Uh, went to Parapil Gardens. Uh, then I lived in North Adelaide. I went to Adelaide University. Um, you know, represented Australia at international level schoolboys soccer, which I don't really talk publicly about, oh. but, you know, it is an achievement. I'm very grateful for that honour. Um, so, yeah, I've been around the trap. He's been around. Wow. And you may know him from any of those things. 13, 24, 10. We've already got a call coming through. Uh, Kate from McDonald Park. How do you know Sam Mack? Hey, guys. I'm married to his cousin, Aaron. Oh, Kate, yeah. yeah hello, Kate. I know Kate very well. Uh, oh, let me give you some trivia. Um, Kate is, um, in her family, is Johnny Platten, a.k.a. The Rat, yeah. one of the greatest AFL players of all time, Brownlow medalist. Yeah. Um, and Kate is an absolute legend. Kate, this is like a family catch-up. How- how's life? How's Aaron? <laughs> Yeah, it's not bad. It's good. He's good. Yeah, how are you? <laughs> oh, I'm pretty good. Yeah, sorry I haven't had time to catch up while I've been in town. It's just been a really quick visit. <laughs> I'm on my way to the airport. I could imagine. So what was the connection there to the rat? Yeah. Is, that, is, that the, is that the rat's daughter? No, I'm his niece. Oh, you're, oh, you're the rat's niece. You're the rat's niece. That's you're incredible. incredible. Wow. 
That's yeah. huge. The rat once sent us some uh, work boots. He did. And I gave my pair to my dad, and he liked them so much that he asked for Liam's pair. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, we'll have to hit Johnny Platten up again for more of his gear. All right, Sam, that's one for one. Do you know when I say the name Yvette, does any names come to mind? Anyone you might know called Yvette? Uh, I, not off the top of my mind, no. Uh, no Yvette's are ringing any bell. Okay. okay well, well, Yvette joins us now from Prospect. How do you know Sam Mack, Yvette? Hi guys, hi Sam. You might remember me. I'm I'm a Donna's. I'm Donna's best friend. Your auntie. Oh, Auntie Donna's best friend. Is that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Absolutely. So I, I have you met you a few I'm... times at a couple yeah. of funerals and a couple of weddings. I remember, but you have you have brown hair. I have blonde hair. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it was oh, so years, because you're always on the cutting edge of style. You've changed it a few times. <laughs> 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 Sam doing his best there. <laughs> uh, okay, well, uh, what about Scots? So, are, are you good friends with any Scots? Did you go to school with any? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, like you know, I've, I've played sport with a number of Scots. I've worked with Scots. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'll know this one. All right, Scott joins us now. Scotty, how do you know Sam Mack? Hey Sam, you don't know me personally, mate, but um, your sister Paula is mates with my wife's sister Claire. <laughs> <laughs> So I've, I've uh, met your parents a few times, but you've never been in town. <laughs> uh, have we somehow have we somehow taken two degrees of separation to make it thirty seven degrees? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. I don't think that was the Scott you're expecting to hear from. That your was, sister though, Paula's <laughs> wife's sister's best friend, Scott. That was a great round of two degrees of separation. Yeah. Sam Mack, always a pleasure getting you on the show, mate. Thanks for joining us. Love your work, guys, and I'm so glad that it wasn't someone from the tax department calling in for that. <laughs> yeah, thank God. <laughs> blonk, blonk. And how would you like to board flight 919 with us? Yep, and fly on over to Port Lincoln. Mm -hmm. You get to go swimming with sea lions. You get to eat oysters straight from the ocean. You get drinks, you get food. It is an incredible prize. Yeah, it's a big date with your state. Um, so if you want to do a bit of a date redo, you just got to tell us about the worst date you've ever been on. 13, 20, 14 is the number. Melissa, tell us about your worst first dates. Hi, guys. Um, so I swiped on someone on Tinder and Matt. Um, we decided to go on a gym date, which wasn't going well a at all. A gym date? So like you went to the gym a, together? Yeah, we went to the gym. Um, it wasn't going well anyway. And then all of a sudden, he lifted up his shirt to show me his third nipple. <laughs> and then proceeded to flick it to make it hard. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe save that yeah. for the fourth date, that party trick, I reckon. That's so weird, Mel. <laughs> <Yeah. now>. That's <laughs> so weird. But a great story to tell on the radio because yeah. now you're a hot contender to win. Yeah, a hot contender to come aboard Flight 919. Douglas, worst first date? Um, yeah, so real, real quick one. Um, met on Tinder, went to a cafe, did the whole first date, get to know your chat, mm -hmm. like hobbies, interests, what do you do for a living, stuff like that. And then we moved on to family. And some of the names started sounding a bit familiar. So after a couple of texts to my mum secretly as well, it turns out we may have been related. Oh. Um, it turns out she was actually my cousin. Oh, you went on a date with your cousin. Oh, yeah, weirdo, so... weirdo, went on a date with his cousin. Game of Thrones guy, Game of Thrones guy. Oh, dog. Um, well, hey, look, I'm glad you, uh, you, know, you sent the text. Yeah. Earlier on the first day. It could have ended very badly, Douglas. Oh, yeah. Well, luckily, we just chatted for a bit afterwards and we went, well, that was awkward. Let's be like, like let's be like nice about this, like get to know that side of the family. Yeah. And then we never spoke again. Yeah. Well, that's good. I'm glad Whoa. you didn't go, well, you know, what the hell? We didn't oh, know, <laughs> we didn't know we were cousins crazy. before. Crazy. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. All right. At the moment, the hot contenders are dating your cousin and third nipple. Uh, Renee, you've had a shocking date. Sadly, have. Uh, I had a mate from work set me up on a blind date. Um, I rocked up to this gentleman's place and he took me to watch him play indoor cricket. <laughs> was he any good? I don't know because I don't really know cricket yeah. and I was starving. Yeah. 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 Oh, and you were hungry as well. That's oh, the sure, worst. I'm sure they went about a Balfour's pie or a giant snake <laughs> or something for you in the canteen. Oh, oh it was shocking. shocking. So how long did you sit there for? Uh, I, I did push on. Yep. I pushed on, um, but neither I did not see him again, and my mate at work got a dark look. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe that's that, maybe that's how he thought you're supposed to pick up 
chicks. I don't yeah. know. Just show off with your indoor cricket prowess. <laughs> uh, Jack, uh, worst first date, mate? Hi, so um, I met a girl working in a bar, and um, she slipped me her number. Uh, I started texting her, asked her out on a date, so we went to a restaurant. Uh, we were sitting having dinner. Everything is going well. Mm. And then this guy walks in with two kids and stands next to the table and says, Oh, so this is where you've been, where I'm oh. looking after the kids. Oh. <laughs> and then he just looked at me and said, hey, by the way, I'm her husband. And I was just like, oh, all right. And I kind of just stood up to leave. And then she was like, no, no, sit down, sit down. Oh. And I said, oh, I don't know. And then the guy's like, I think you should leave. And I was like, yep, see ya. And I just went to the bar and just like, Gave them cash for my food and left. (laughs) (laughs) That is horrific, Jack. That is horrific. At least he didn't try and, like, fight you, because you didn't know what was going on. He he brought the kids to the table. (laughs) They're going to remember your face for the rest of their lives. So, Jack, what did did, did the guy and the wife do? Did they get up and leave with the kids? Um, So, it kind of went on a bit longer than that. I kind of stood at the bar and maybe watched it. It was more of just kind of like a... A very awkward conversation. Yeah. But the guy was like really nice to me. He just said, Oh, like, I'm her husband. And I was like, Cool, I'm going to leave. And he was like, Yep. And then I left. But I kind of sat in my car for a while just to see what was going to go on. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, they, they all just left together like one happy family. Uh, she <laughs> must do it all the time. Yeah, Jack. Well, I uh, look, look, we've had so many good calls this morning, <laughs> but I reckon, I reckon that's my favorite. Hang on. You reckon, you reckon that Jack's is better than Douglas's when he dated his cousin? That's pretty raw Dating as well. Cousin's pretty funny. Yeah, I know. But then also imagine going out on a date with someone and then all of a sudden their husband and kids rock up to yeah. the table. All right, Jack, mate, you coming along. Congratulations. Amazing. Thank you. No worries, Jackie. Do not take that woman, please. <laughs> I don't want that angry husband at the airport waiting for us when we come back. Ben and Liam love you. We are joined now by our producer, Belle. What's trending? Trending all over the internet. Twitter. Instagram. Welcome to Facebook. Guys, well, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg is currently being mocked by his employees. Remember how he um, has created the Metaverse? Yes. And kind of replaced Facebook as such. Well, apparently he now wants all his employees to call each other Meta mates. Imagine working in that office. Zuck walks in and tips his fedora at you. Top of the Meta morning to you, Meta mate. <laughs> <laughs> Just kill me. Kill me now. I'm going to go work for Google. Yeah, it is a wild business. Now, if you're a bit confused about this whole figure skating doping scandal that's in the news at the moment with the Winter Olympics, um, I think we need to do like a quick one minute up. We all know that Russia has a terrible track record with the drug cheating and big sporting events. Mm-hmm. Um, if you didn't know, that's why you may have noticed that the Winter Olympics, uh, they don't actually compete as Russia at the moment. They've had to enter as R- as the ROC, mm-hmm. the Russian Olympic Committee. Real loophole. It's it, Pretty much, yeah. They can't even use their own flag, if you have noticed that. So in the latest saga, it's basically this whole news story. It's gotten everyone talking. It involves this figure skater, Camilla Valieva. She's this 15-year-old, yeah? She's 15 years old, so very, very young, and some experts say that she could be, like, the best figure skater of all time. A phenom. A what? A phenom is the word, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. It's a word, yeah. She's a phenom. I don't, I've never heard phenom before. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a word. I'm pretty sure. Let's Can we get a Google, Google on that? <laughs> phenom. I reckon that's a word. Uh, well, before the Olympics started, so this was last year, she did have to take a drug test. Uh, and this week, right in the middle of the competition, while she's absolutely nailing it, they actually got a positive test back for three banned substances. So this is where it gets a little bit crazy and a bit messy. So because um, she's only 15, they're still letting her compete. And rather than kicking her out in the middle of the Olympics, um, officials are now letting her skate and will now determine afterwards if she gets the medals that she does win. Right, once once they sort of review all the facts. Correct, yeah. So the decision has left, like, followers and commentators pretty stunned and confused, um, as you can hear in these commentators here. And for all the other Olympic athletes skating here, I feel I need to say again that she had a positive test. We should not have seen the skate. And We are so I- sorry it's overshadowing your Olympics. They're so American. <laughs> We're so sorry that you had to see that, you guys. She's a drag cheat. We don't like it. Well, the best part, their excuse for it, they're saying that her supplements got mixed up, like her legal supplements got mixed up with her granddad's heart. Oh, medical. yeah. I'm sure, I'm, sure they got the same, I'm sure they got the same pill boxes. It's kind of like when the US runner got done for anabolic steroids and she was like, oh, I just had a burrito last night. That's Would have been right. that, right? <laughs> that was the burrito, I reckon. Also, uh, Phenom, short for phenomenon. Oh, right. 
right. Okay, yep. we're all learning something today. And finally, uh, now back home here in Adelaide, you may want to check your bags of grapes this morning after redbacks have actually started popping up in packets around the country. What? South Australian representative cricketers have been oh, popping geez. up in packets of grapes? No. What the hell? What's next? <laughs> you open your grapes and Alex Carey's in there. We've had pins. Now we've got Travis Head. I don't know where this bloody ends. I don't think I'm going to eat fruit anymore. <laughs> and that's the end of the Ben and Lane podcast. Order, order. Oh. I've found some new sound effects, Lane, which is exciting for me. Oh, that's great. Yeah, what else have you got? Um, not many, to be honest. I've got medium-sized clap. That's pretty good. Um, there's gavel, which you've already heard. Yeah, I liked that. Yep. Um, what else you got? You got... It's about it, really. Mario Kart. Whose job is it to go, right, the guy's made some new sound <laughs> Three effects. Three I reckon they'll effects. need a gavel, which, you know, to be fair, I could see that being yep. used in the show. Me too. They're going to need medium claps, because, you know, all their other claps weren't good enough, apparently. And then the Mario Kart theme. I don't think this is necessarily... What would spring to mind is like the first sound effect. No. Do you know what I mean? You're... That's pretty good. Like when yep. you're talking, yeah, you're talking <laughs> about money or that, like, yeah. hey, you've won the cash. Yeah, yeah that's that's yeah. good. And that's all they've got. Yeah, excellent. So well, I said new sound effects, but there's only four. Okay, well, maybe we have to send another email out, see if we can get a few more on the system, eh? Yep. Um, look, I'll be honest, it's not the strongest ending to a podcast. No, no, it's not at all. Um, but we didn't have anyone uh, to call. Oh, we had, so... yeah, you're lamer. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> she didn't answer her phone because she had some sort of weird setting. So, And um, then we argued about pie for a bit. <laughs> I, yeah, that's so, that is a, considered a South Australian delicacy. Yep. Um, but certainly not. Anything I've partaken in, even frog cakes, I haven't really. No, eaten. and frog in a pond. That yeah, frog in a pond is everyone though, right? Is it? Yeah, I don't think that's just us. Oh, so that was SA. No, nah, frog in a pond. Just, just like a, just a Fredo, Fredo frog, Fredo in, frog jelly. in jelly. Yeah, yeah, man, they're awesome. I used to like smash those things. Frog in a pond. Yeah, frog in a pond. Yeah, I just don't like. I, I would as a kid, I would have eaten it, but now just like jelly, not for me. I couldn't imagine me making yeah, like jelly. getting a sachet of airplane jelly and making some jelly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember when we were kids? Um, I don't know where Mum got it from, but she had some of those. Do you have a freeze-dried ice cream that you have in the army? No. Really? No. Oh, I thought that's pretty normal. Um, <laughs> army ice cream. Army ice cream. It's freeze-dried, so, oh, it right. so it doesn't melt. But it tastes like ice cream. It's really weird. So right. like, it's like it comes in like a... It's kind of like a candy bar, yeah. and you open it, and it's like Neapolitan, so it was pink, white, and brown. Yeah. And you, you would eat it, and it tastes like ice cream. So it, it wouldn't melt crunchy. in the sense that you could keep it in the pantry. Yep. yep. You, so we, you we had, ice, we had ice, cream ice cream in the pantry, yeah. What the heck? Yeah, it's weird now I think about it. But it was like a little treat. You used, used to eat something around then. Is it like, was it like... Um, honeycomb kind yeah, of? Yeah, now, like, now I think honey, I know what you mean. Like honeycomb... It's, it like, like polystyrene. But honeycomb would like, would you chew it if you, it was like crunchy at the start and then it would get sticky and chewy. Yeah. Whereas... This is just always it's like... Just, it's just crunchy. I know the stuff And now. after like, I don't know, two or three chews, it kind of dissipates. I'm getting the consistency of that now. Yeah. Where do you even get that stuff? I don't know. I think you get it from the army. Your now mum was getting, no, getting now cheap that I, meals now from that the I, army. The more I think about it, the more I remember we had some neighbours that lived like, I don't, you know your neighbours you left and your right. Yeah. Is it your neighbour if they're behind you? Yeah, I suppose yeah. technically, yeah. Well, te- our, our behind neighbours, their dad was in the army. Right. I think his name was John. And, he, and John was obviously, you know, stealing, stealing a lot of the inventory yeah. and giving it to his mates. And I think he might have had a bunch and he gave some to us. Right. I reckon that's And when you say from. a bunch, you mean like a crate that should have been dropped over some sort of <laughs> war torn area. Ice cream deprived area. Yeah. 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 Also, like, I suppose it's a nice little treat after a big day of, you know, re- yeah, recon war. work or, yeah, after four, <laughs> But also, you would think like they would have more nutritious meals that would, they would spend the time I working guess you out miss of the small things like Neapolitan ice cream. That's true. Mm. You know, after a long, hard day of war, you yeah. might just want to sit down and go, well, this isn't quite ice cream because yeah. um, it can be stored in a pantry. Yeah. But it tastes sort of the same, I suppose. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, anyway, I, I think we should launch a full invi- uh, military <laughs> scale <laughs> investigation into that John guy because he sounds a bit dicey. Bye. Ben and Liam is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.